kayak anglers of the internet welcome back to the advanced kayak angler with me dan perry and my co-host kurt smith what's up buddy how's it going man good going good except for work but you know that's that's work that's how it is that's life yeah. it's li- exactly it's life man without work there isn't much I- <laughs> you can't have much anything else <laughs> yeah i'm trying to figure out how not to do the work thing anymore but it just i'm stuck yeah. embrace the suck that's what i say yeah, yeah. that's, <laughs> that's all i can do uh, all right well this week we're talking about something different we're going way off course like i know sometimes i'll be out on the water and i'll get catfish i'm like what in the hell i don't want i don't want one of these i mean i'll eat them i'll eat a catfish but this <laughs> week we've got catfish kayak anglers so yeah i'm, I'm excited man something totally new and it's not just catfish kayak anglers, man. There is a national kayak fishing trail these guys have put together. And I think a lot of people, this was going to open up a lot of people's eyes to it. Because I met these guys at uh, some shows a few years ago. And, well, let's let them tell it. But it, it, it was really impressive. Their, their, their trail series that they had was really impressive. So let's bring them on. All right. Here we go. So, guys, I'm going to kind of let you guys introduce yourselves. Mike, you want to start? I'll start. Yeah, I'm uh, I'm Kayak Mike. I have been kayak catfishing five or six years now, maybe seven. I've been hosting events. Uh, I started kayak catfishing immediately. The first day I was in a kayak, I was in an event. I started hosting about three months after that. Um, Do you have a U-pick? I- I wasn't a U pick for a long time. I watch, I've watched your YouTube video recently. How about that yep. small yep. one? Yeah, I was, I was in a U pick for a long time. Um, I started off in the Ascend 128T, uh, third trip in the Descended and uh, to the bottom of the Little Miami River with about $1,000 worth of brand new gear, right in front of where um, where y'all launch at the um, that one row place. Oh, the yeah. marina? Yeah, 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 yeah. That's that's where it flipped. Um, so if, you know, if it's still there, there's about a thousand dollars worth of new gear. That's just, you know, bottom of the river right there. Um, started off in that, uh, I literally, I quit, I actually quit. And then somebody reached out to me. I went down, picked up a new canoe Flint and then oh. fish fished out of that and almost killed myself a thousand times. Great. Pla- Hold on. Great. Year. Let me make something clear here. Great platform. I don't want to be come off as band brashing cause I'm in a new canoe now. Uh, but as we started um, expanding this sport, we realized, okay, I'm bringing out four or 500 pounds worth of gear before myself. So, you know, the Flint was an amazing platform until I started really expanding. Uh, then, you know, Jason Ricketts reached out to me. I joined the Jackson team for a little while there. My first kayak was a U-Pick, which was awesome. Then I went to a big rig. Uh, then I went to, I'll skip that kayak because I never endorse it. Uh, that that one, one thing about me, no matter who I'm working with, I don't pull punches. Um, there was a kayak of theirs that, you know, I'll, I'll be frank, got for free. Uh, I, but within five minutes, I told him, like, this is a piece of crap for what I do. Great kayak for speed, for pedaling, for smaller species. But I told him, like, it ain't for me. Um, and then I went back to a big rig over to a take two. Mm. And then um, we have sponsors in our, our national trail now. Uh, and my criteria for a sponsor is cash. Uh, the way I look at it is tournament anglers typically have what they want to be fishing in. So unless you hit a certain criteria in in flat out cash that you're going to give us to give away to the anglers at these tournaments, I don't want any of your gear. Uh, I will happily give out your gear and drawings and that kind of stuff. But first, you got to give me, you know, if you don't give us like five hundred dollars in cash to give to the anglers for placing, etc., then we we're not going to mess with your gear because um, I. I, I sometimes I don't feel like companies look into, I guess I'm getting to the business aspect of this right now as being an administrator. Sometimes I don't, I don't think companies look into the cost. Like some companies will say like, I gave $500 sponsorship, but they gave $500 a gear, which was $70 of their call overhead. So they gave a $70 sponsorship. See, people don't look at it like that. I'm looking at it as a bit like I'm, I'm trying to treat the tournament scene as a business. So if you gave me $70 worth of your overhead, you gave me a $70 sponsorship. That that That's how I see it, and that's how I'm trying to treat the anglers too. Um, everything we do for the tournament scene, it's all for the anglers. Um, and then, yeah, that's that was segued into, you know, left Jackson, and now I just, I just work with anyone who works with us. 
criteria is uh, equipment has to be good. Uh, it can't it can't be bad. Like I won't push. Like I said, I don't pull punches. No, you know, if you want to sponsor me or not, it's got it's got to work and it's got to be high quality. Um, and so yeah, now I'm with Raccoon Creek Outfitters. They sponsored us. They gave us five grand this year for our trail. I'm working with Catfish Sumo. They gave us five grand. I'm working with King Cat. They're going to be giving us. Lot. <laughs> I don't know if I'm obligated to, uh, to say how much, but quite a bit. Um, and yeah, that's that's the introduction to me. Oh, I have a YouTube channel, but I'll be honest. I everything I do now is focused on the anglers. The the only people I care about in this scene in this sport right now are taking care of our anglers on our scene, our tournament trail. I just want to see these guys get guys getting paid and recognized as, as much as I can. Okay, so, Mike, hold up a second, man. I know you are like one a like super passionate guy, I, but Let's talk about the trail series because I don't, I don't even know if you mentioned the name of it. Oh, yeah, it's, yeah. It's really impressive. The, the, the trail <laughs> series is – is this is why I wanted you on here because this is like – this isn't a local thing. It's a national deal. So let's talk about that for a second. Ryan, hang on a second. You're coming, buddy. I swear. I promise. I'm, I'm not going to let Mike hog up the whole uh, thing. No, I'm he's used to it. <laughs> he's used to it. Yeah. Yeah. All right, so the, the name – so we use the Fishing Chaos app, and the name of the group is Online Catfishing Tournaments. Uh, we have all sorts of series. Uh, we have – let me open it up here. We have two national two national month-long series. There's an open competition, and then there's a slot competition. The open competition is your biggest five fish on the month, so it's your longest fish. Um, I'm assuming most people know in your world, but I'll, I'll, I'll explain it to as if some way brand new's listening. It's your five longest fish. We use what's called a musky bumper. Um, it's the only board that I allow on my scene because none of the other board brands right now are good enough for what we do. Uh, I, I'm not saying other board brands aren't quality. I'm just saying as far as a judge and picture taking, it's really the only thing we have available where I can easily judge every single fish. Cause when you're judging a 45 to 50 inch fish, you got to be three, four, five feet away. Well, a lot of these boards are thinner. Uh, a lot of boards and numbers aren't as clear. So it, it's our only real tool. Uh, if anybody has a machine shop and wants to get in the game, I'm opening. Uh, I'm open for business. Um, and then we have our slot tournament, which is uh, your best 10 fish up to but not breaking 10 inches. Or I'm sorry, 30 inches, 10, 30 inches. Uh, and the reason we use 30 inches for a few reasons, the musky bumper naturally cuts off at 30 inches. And 30 inches, anyone in the country can be competitive. Honestly, channel cat fishermen probably have the biggest advantage in those tournaments because you can get a lot of channels at 30 inches. If you're down south, you're going to catch a lot in a 30 to 40 inch range. You're not going to catch a lot in a 20 to 30 inch range. So anyone can be competitive in that slot tournament. Our slot rules are kind of unique. Uh, that 30 inch slot, you need to be achieving max length. Now, something that I see in other species, they have so, I mean, you guys have so many rules. It's insane. <laughs> Our rules are simple. You put that fish right side down, left side up. If it's a blue or channel on their belly, if it's flat, you try and achieve max length without manipulating the fish actively with your hand. That's it. It's literally that simple. Uh, you could be holding it down with your hand, all that kind of stuff. Um, but that that's our rules, and it's really that simple. The longest that it's touching the board, that's what you get credit for. Uh, you can't be you can't be spreading the tail. Like, let's say the fish is 31 inches. You can't spread the tail to make it 30. If I see anything remotely close to that, automatic DQ. Uh, I'm extremely transparent. Uh, when Something that's a little different with me, when I judge these fish and stuff, I, a lot of times I'm doing it live. And I'll just tell people flat out while I'm doing the live and judging these fish, hey, this is why this is being DQ'd. So uh, there's... I'm as transparent as humanly possible. That way there's no questioning me on the back end. Um, there's no, I, I mean, I hope I don't have this reputation, but I'm not aware of any kind of reputation that I have for hooking anyone up, cheating, blah, blah, because everything is online. And I, I, I kind of wish more people would do this because you guys know some not great administrators as well. Um, shady stuff, unfortunately, and I'm not talking fishing. I'm talking in tournaments in general. Shady things can happen in general. So I just wish there was more transparency across across the whole scene. And then we have a we have another month long, which is Ohio, Indiana, Kentucky regional. Uh, that's only for those bodies of water. I like doing regional events as well because those national events. I'll be honest, like the national open. If I look at the roster of ten to twenty anglers, I'm going to tell you who the top three are before it even starts, and then I'm also going to tell you who's going to be big fish. Um, so that, that's the only, that's the only thing that stinks about the national open event or the national month longs is that it's just, 
Body of water does play a giant factor. Uh, yeah. Anyone who says it doesn't, I'm sorry, you're just wrong. <laughs> and I, then I, I know for us, it can be the state. Like if you're not, you know, if you're not in the north part of Alabama, my area is not going to compete with North Alabama. It just, you know, it just yeah, doesn't. yeah, and also internally in the state as well. Uh, you, gr yeah. yeah, great example. Um, uh, just catfish in general. If you want to do a catfish or a channel catfish tournament in Ohio, just Ohio your Sandusky guys are going to win that there's just, there's no arguing that, you know what I mean? So all uh, bodies wire do play a factor. We have three in person or four in person trails. Um, one's kind of, but not in person. We do an Ohio link series where we go to different events in Ohio and it's an in-person event there. Uh, that's once a month or twice a month, depending on the month. We have a Hoover cats length division, which started up last year as a test event. Uh, that one's prospering really well. Once or twice a month again there on Hoover. Um, Scioto River, we do a 24-hour event. This one, Scioto is the one that's not um, that's not in person. It's like a hundred-some mile stretch of the Scioto River that you can fish, and it's a 24-hour noon-to-noon event. I really like, I don't know if you guys do 24-hour events. Noon-to-noon, noon, the noon format is awesome. You can wake up, get to your spot easily by noon, get off the water if you don't feel like fishing at night, wake up 5, 6 in the morning, well-rested, fish till noon. Uh, I A lot of events do their 24 hours from midnight to midnight, which encourages people to get on the water by midnight, which means they're probably up all day the day before getting onto the water in their spot by midnight. And then they're, a lot of them just want to muscle through. So I, I really like that noon to noon format. And then the the big one that we do, the King Cat National Kayak Trail. Uh, I hooked up with King Cat last year. They sponsored one of our events um, up at Sandusky. And this year, they just gave me free rents. They're like, hey, look, you're part of the team. You just do your thing. And that's that's what I'm looking for. I just, if I'm going to be working with somebody, just just let a dog eat. Like, just just let me just let me run with it. I got you. Um, and yeah, we got one, two, three, four, five. We have nine events this year. Ohio twice, Tennessee twice, Alabama twice, Sandy Cooper once, Louisiana on the Mississippi River. That's going to be a ton of fun. And we hit Owensboro, Kentucky um, just not too long ago. So so that's that a really solid schedule. I just want to say is like I'm a bass guy, but you just covered a big part of the country. I know you covered some good water for catfish. Even though I'm not a catfish guy, I just know those body, some of those bodies of water. And, and you're hitting a lot of like prime stuff. So you know, kind of what catapulted you guys into doing like a national trail and when did that start? Because when I met you a couple years ago, we talked about this a little bit at the boat show and I was really impressed with you guys payout and I was just, and just, just how the whole thing was set up. It was just really cool. Uh, two years ago, we did a little test inter Ohio trail uh, just for fun. Ohio for kayak cat fishermen is probably the best represented state uh, by a very wide margin when it comes to competitive uh, kayak cat fishermen. Uh, Why is that? We just have a ton. We we just have uh, guys who enter. Now we have a lot of people across the country, but people who physically enter the tournaments who are who are willing to travel. Ohio for some reason just has the best representation. I is think it's like because bass, bass fishing isn't like as you know as great as it is in some other places well it, i mean it's, oh, ohio's known to be tough bass fishing you have like you know some great anglers from there but they're all like you know like grinders so oh, for catfish too hold on that's why yeah, that's, <laughs> that's why. exactly oh, okay. why so we have a bunch of guys who want to compete and if you look at my national schedule those are all big time catfishing locations except for one the only one that's not a big time catfishing location is owensboro uh, owensboro is an awesome city it just unfortunately happens to be on the ohio river now there are certain areas of the ohio river that have good fishing uh but not if you're putting a tournament together in a hundred mile boundary you, yeah. you know what i mean uh we unfortunately if you guys have not seen the post just like the last week it like it's been a hot topic like trophy pay lakes have absolutely decimated our fishing population up here. So you can fish the Ohio river for a month straight and catch one 40 inch fish. If you're lucky, I'm going to go fish anywhere else on this schedule. And I'm going to catch a 40 inch fish almost guaranteed every single day. Um, so that's another, another attractive thing to the Ohio guys that want to compete. 
So Pickwick Wilson, there's a legitimate chance at a hundred pounder. Wheeler, hundred pounder, legit. Hoover, you're going to catch thirties and forties, almost guaranteed. Sandy Cooper, legit chance at a hundred pounder. Nigga Jack, legit chance at a hundred pounder. Chickamauga, legit chance at a hundred pounder. Sandusky Bay, your legit chance at a 35, 40 pound channel cat. Like they're all destination, like everything on here is a destination location. So not only do we have the sponsors to pump up our payouts. So first place is a thousand dollars guaranteed. Big fish is $500 guaranteed. And then entry is 150. 25 of that goes to big fish. Uh, 125 of that or 120 of it, I believe goes to the entry or the, the pot itself. Um, so our payouts, like we just had 11 people and I think the payouts were like 1700 to first 600 to second 150 to or third. 11 people. Yeah. And, and almost a hundred percent payout payback. Yeah. Essentially there, uh, the fish and chaos app, I think it's like a $5 credit card fee. Yeah. So I, you know, it's all going back to the anglers. Um, no, I mean, that's now, that uh, compared to other bass, uh, you know, bass fishing trails out there is the. The payouts are always not as good. Our, our Sandusky tournament last year had 33, pe 33 people in it. And first place uh, with Big Fish, I think, got like five grand or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Three or four people walked away with a grand with 33 anglers in our tournament last year. Yeah, I was I was third place and still walked away with like 1,200 bucks. Yeah. So, I, like, we yeah. going catfishing, Kurt. <laughs> Yeah, I know it, man. I know. Ir ironically, this last tournament, we had a bass guy. Uh, he fished. He took second, so he was able to get up underneath a dam. So uh, beneath any dam in the country, you're gonna have you know the whole the Volkswagen yeah. fish. But so he got up up underneath the dam before they turned the flow on. It would not have been possible to get there before they turned the flow on. And there's a little slack water to the side, so he was able to fish one of the prime spots. He was able to pull out a second place in big fish. And I walked over. I'm like, yeah, so, you know, my payouts will be done by Friday. I think I owe you about 1200 bucks, second place in big fish. And his eyes just lit up and he's like, <laughs> what? And he's like, 1200 bucks for second place for 11 people. I'm like, well, yeah, like you paid 150 to get in. I, I got all this sponsor money. What do you like? You know, I'm not going to pocket it all. Now with that said, I understand being an administrator and putting on so like a lot of your tournaments have a hundred to two hundred kayaks. You have to have a team to host something like that. People yeah. aren't going to do this stuff for free. Um, I am technically doing it for free at the moment, but there is a payday coming down the road for me from for me through King Cat. So like, let me make this perfectly clear. I I mean, don't get me wrong. I would be doing it for free, and I have been doing it for free forever. But I do understand, you know, administrate. It's a lot of work. Anyone who's oh, yeah. listening to me, like it's it's a crazy amount of work um, to put on, you know, seven series, you just four in per, you know, a month, etc. Uh, so I do feel like administrators should get paid, but I also, I, I just I wish sometimes there was more of a focus on the anglers than the event or the administrator himself. Uh, that's just that's just my personal opinion. All right, well, before we go any further, at eighteen and a half minutes in, Ryan. Tell everybody who you are, man. <laughs> so I'm uh, Ryan Bortz, uh, Ryan Bortz, Blue Collar Fishing on all social media platforms, YouTube, TikTok, Facebook, Instagram. I don't know. There's probably a couple I'm on I don't even know about, to be honest with you. Um, I just <laughs> recently fans, went, went full time with this whole gig, um, trying to make the social media stuff work. I don't know if it will or not. I'm, I'm on a good path. I'll put it that way. Um, I fish all Mike's events for the most part. Um, I kind of stepped back away from the online stuff for a while. He means the month longs. Yeah. Yeah. It's the, all online. The, it's all online, but the, the month long events and stuff, I kind of stepped back. I'm focused 100% solely on YouTube and this national trail. 100% of my effort goes into that. Like this time I just spent two weeks in, uh, chattanooga getting ready for well uh, the first week of it was my family vacation but i fished most every day um the second week was pre-fishing for this event uh before that i think i spent a week where was or no i spent four or five days up at owensboro uh before that we were in tennessee again before that right mike i don't remember i was there for uh, a week. yeah chickamauga we are chickamauga and then before that i was in alabama for a week so i've I've been very busy uh, traveling and yeah. trying to work for these wins at these tournaments. And I mean, it's paid off. I've, 
I've not cashed in one event this year so far, and that was in my backyard. So, uh, but hometown uh, curse. Oh. I'm dropping uh, YouTube videos every Tuesday and every Thursday at least for the next six weeks. I know. So Damn. I've got plenty of content backed up and scheduled to to come out. Uh, I don't know what else to really say about it. I, I try to win all Mike's events. <laughs> That's right. I'm so I, my dude, bait I, man. Yeah, yeah. He's I'm, so he's he's my bait man. I haven't bait fished in like two or three years. I I yeah. hate bait fishing. <laughs> I have no patience for it. But I'm there for a week usually before the tournament, and I know where the bait's at. I've usually got a pretty good idea where to find my fish at. So when he shows up, I feel his cooler up, and we go fishing. <laughs> gotcha. So what what are some of the rules? Is it artificial, live, like what? I mean, I'm honestly any, totally any statewide. It's based off your state bait rules. So, so like here in Kentucky, we can't use uh, game fish for bait, but in Ohio, we can. So, it's whatever that state allows. Now, my personal preference is skipjack if they live in that body of water. But like uh, here on my home lake here in Kentucky, they we don't have skipjack. So, it's bluegill, shad, stuff like that. Carp. I love carp for bait cut up carp um i do some live bait fishing especially this time of year when the flatheads are really moving and active i'll, I'll use live bluegill uh, and by bluegill i mean shell crackers bluegill sunfish they're all they're all bait so um <laughs> that's about it i mean you do catch them on artificials sometimes but i've never actually targeted catfish with artificials i've caught them yeah. when i used to bass fish a lot I originally came from the bass world. Um, I was actually live bait fishing some brush piles and was catching uh, channel cats and post them on Facebook, you know, just being a smart aleck. And the guy that me and Mike actually got into this whole thing through started a local Taylorsville tournament. And he's seen them pictures. And he's, well, come down here and fish this tournament. It's free. We got some gift cards to give away. I'm like, nah, man, I'm, I'm not interested in catfish. I'm a bass guy, you know, and he taught me into coming down there and I won it with like four 12 inch channel cats. <laughs> and you know, I was talking mad crap. <laughs> and he said, well, now that you've got the big head, he said, come out with me and let me put you on a real fish next week. So we went out the next weekend and he put me on about a 25, 30 pound blue cat. And my life was completely different after that day. <laughs> So, so I, but, I, like, but, so you, it's like a twofer. You catch your bait and then you have to, and then you fish for the catfish. So you guys, as in bass anglers, go to Walmart, mm -hmm. Cabela's, wherever, tackle warehouse, buy your baits. For me to go fishing, I've got to go spend two or three hours, sometimes two or three days catching bait before I can even go chase catfish. And mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, you can use chicken and all these pre-packaged things but it's kind of like using crickets to catch uh, bass that's that's what i would compare it to i mean yeah you're going to catch one here and there but it's not going to be consistent it's it's not what they eat yeah and it's and they're not going to be big so so a misconception is uh catfish are bottom feeders they they're actually the apex predator in north america uh there's nothing that eats an adult catfish other than other adult catfish uh, the only freshwater fish that gets bigger is the white sturgeon. It's a sturgeon. I just can't remember which one. Uh, they're, they're found more more up north. Um, yeah. But yeah, catfish are extremely predatory fish. Uh, they are con convenience eaters as well. They, you know, if a dead fish is rolling down the river, they will absolutely take advantage of it. Opportunistic feeder. They're opportunistic feeders as well, but they're b absolutely by no means bottom feeders. Uh, they'll eat, you know, mussels and stuff off the bottom of the river, but that's not the same. Like when you say bottom feeder, you're thinking more along the lines of a, like a carp, like the shape of their mouth. Uh, drum are and aren't bottom feeders. Buffalo, same thing. Are and aren't they? They're with the shape of their mouth, you know, indicates, you know, they kind of have that vacuum shape, so they will suck insects and stuff through the muds. But they also hit minnows, and that, like, I can't tell you how many times I pull cranks for crappie at East Fork and I smash drum. Not drum and um. Uh, buffalo nonstop. It, they're like my primary off catch when I'm, you know, pulling cranks for cranks for uh, crappie. Uh, but yeah, I just and the big the big catfish, 
they're really hard to target with artificials because they're just typically not interested. Um, uh, scent so is much a, time to look at it. You know? Yeah, yeah. Scent is a giant deal in the catfish world. Um, also, when a when a trophy catfish wants to eat, he eats when he wants to. He doesn't eat when it's opportunistic anymore. So a lot of like mainly when you're fishing with lures, mainly you catch smaller catfish because they need to get in, eat, get out because they're still on the food chain. So they're very, or they're fighting a bunch of, they're fighting a bunch of other catfish to get to the food first. So that's why you catch smaller catfish on artificials much more often than trophy catfish. Uh, tro trophy catfish, what we're targeting are actually extremely difficult to get to because you need to know the patterns of every other fish first to get to that one. So if you don't know when the bluegill are going to spawn and then when the bass are going to spawn, and then when your fish are going to spawn, you might be out in the middle of the river where you caught a couple fifties the month prior. And then it's a ghost river because you don't know the other patterns of the other fish. So to be a consistent trophy kayak cat fisherman, you need to know everything. You can't just know catfish patterns because our patterns are literally based off of every other species because every other species is on the dinner table. And, I, and that's a, one of the biggest misconceptions about catfishing that i see people make this mistake i went here last year and caught a 60 pounder or so and so caught that 80 pounder right here right where we're fishing well that does you no good if you're three months down the road or in a completely different weather pattern that spot's useless in the wrong time of year now you may go back there and the and replicate the exact conditions the exact month same time of year same water level same current conditions you know and all that and you might do good again and you might not but that's what i've learned traveling the country with mike over the last couple of years is i'm starting to put together patterns of when fish are in different areas at different lakes and it is directly related to like he said the crappie spawn the bluegill spawn and the bass spawn because in bass yeah or crappie or bluegill when they go up there to spawn they're easy meals you know and most of them spawn in the same type areas so and and uh what was it chickamauga my my tournament pattern down there was based around the crappie spawn i mean that's what i what i get in that tournament mike that was uh was i third there uh no, i'll oh. pull it up I I won, won you won that one, yeah. I think it was like 117 inches or something like that. And my my complete week down there was based on where the crappie guys were fishing at. I knew that's where I needed to be at. Uh, you had 122 inches and three fish. Yep. And that, that I was actually sad with that score because my best day was like 129. Wow. For my best three pre-fishing. Yeah, that, that was a good week for everybody. So do, do you have to catch them all on rod and reel or is it? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Our rules are real simple. Follow the state law you're in. You're good. It's literally that simple. Um, my, Other than noodles and trot lines. We don't, we can't use those. Yeah. Got to be rod and reel. And I did set a limit of three hooks, but that's actually to protect the angler. Cause you'll have morons like me who, <laughs> if I'm allowed to run five hooks, I'm going to run five hooks. Right. You can't, you can't be having a fish in the kayak with four free hooks just because we're using 80 to 100 pound test braid or mono. So if a fish is flopping around, flops out of the kayak, wraps your leg up with 80 to 100 pound mono, you're not just going to snap that. And now you got three or four hooks stuck in your leg. So, <laughs> so I, I do cap us at three hooks. Um, no one really runs more than two that I'm aware of. Uh, but yeah, you're only allowed three hooks per, per reel, uh, no, or per rod, no matter what the state laws are. Yeah, we run and there's nothing we don't do that the big boats do. The only thing we can't do is run wide open, like 40 miles an hour. Uh, we got rod racks, Adam Flegel, he runs 10 rods off his kayak. I'm lazy. I run five. Like how, how crazy does that sound? I'm a lazy cat fisherman and I run five rods. <laughs> I, I can run 10. I stick to six to eight. If you see me running more than six, I'm really struggling to find. A bite. <laughs> wow. If I, if I'm struggling to find fish and the bite's slow for me, you'll see me with eight or ten. But normally on tournament day, you'll see me with six. So let's talk about how you guys have your kayaks rigged up because not everyone listening to this podcast is going to be familiar with how a catfisherman's going to have yeah. their kayak set up. So, so I'm kind of 
I guess you would say the leader in our niche group of innovations and in what, what we go to. Um, I actually run a Jackson take two kayak. It's a tandem Big kayak. kayak. That I, yeah. I left the seats at the dealer. <laughs> I <laughs> bought the kayak at the dealer and took the seats off and left it there. Um, I started with a blank platform. I mounted a uh, XI3 24 volt to it. I have a 100 amp 24 volt uh, lithium battery that I've got mounted in there. I have a Millennium seat, just like what goes in a boat, and I have mm -hmm. that on risers, so it sets up like I'm sitting in a Lazy Boy. Um, I added a storage box to the front, which is crazy huge. Um, I have a rod rack on the rear of it that I run. I got six rod holders on it, so I can put eight rods in there. I have uh, two rod holders on the sides on the gunnels that I use for uh, suspend fishing, just different types of fishing. I'll use different ones. I have um, a Lowrance HDS 9, yeah, 9, mounted up front with uh, active target. And the I don't know what you call the transducer when you can move it on a pole, on the pole mount. Live scope. Um, and then I have a... Uh, three in one transducer on the back. I normally run a eight or a, uh, elite nine on the back on my rod rack. So I can see while I'm spun around backwards and dragging, I can the see two oh, fish finders. Yep. One yeah. in the, depend on which way you're aiming. I like that. Yep. And, and I use that for when I'm dragging baits oh. and pulling planer boards. You're giving got, Kurt ideas. Watch out. I've, <laughs> I've got planer boards out beside me, you know, sometimes a hundred feet to each side. So I use that side scan when I'm coming up on a log pile or something. If I'm not being lazy, I can get those rods in before they get to that log pile and get hung up and I'll lose a bunch of rigs. Sometimes I'm Planet lazy and I so, hope for the best. So you're doing a lot of trolling. Um, I'm almost always moving fishing. Um, okay. I'm either trolling or drifting with the current. I very rarely am spot locked and actually casting rods out like you would think average cat fisherman sitting there with lines out you know i'm rarely doing that my my thing is dragging with planter boards which is you got a, a dragon weight kind of looks like a slinky in a way a float that floats your bait up off the bottom and you pull that along at 0.5 miles an hour on average um i do suspend drifting where i drop lines straight down and i drift with the current or i cut mm -hmm. the speed of the current say in half I do uh, bumping, which that's what won me this tournament last weekend was bumping or back bouncing. I cut the speed of the current in half and I drift with it. And then I just bounce a weight off the bottom behind me and drift down river, which is the most natural presentation that you can put a bait to a fish. That That's my, uh, that's my favorite way to fish right now. If Honestly, if I don't see three mile an hour current, I get bummed out now. Like if I don't see flow... I'm really sad because I want to be in the middle of the river, three mile an hour current back, but there's nothing like a 50 pound fish trying to rip the rod out of your hand <laughs> in four mile an hour current. So uh, it's so much fun. So I was um, talking about the uh, bass angler fishing below the dam this past weekend. I was actually already hooked up on my first fish when he come up to the dam. I was actually fighting a fish as he was coming up and it had pulled me back down river and he stopped and watched me catch that fish. And then we both went back up together. And uh, there was some storms come in around, what was it, 9.30, Mike, 9 o'clock? About then, something yeah. Like that. I already had my three fish limit for the tournament and found out the storms were coming. And I'm like, I'm already on them. Like, I already had my winning score put up the first hour. And I'm like, there's no way I can leave because of some storms. I'm fishing through it. Like, I'm not moving for nobody. My very next drift, I hit a fish and it pulled me back down through between the bridge pylons. And that's where the fastest water's at. Well, after that happened, I was like, well, I'm getting out of the storm. So got up there, got on the bank, got up under the picnic shelter, got out of the storm. While I was up there, they cranked the water up and I couldn't get back up to my spot. So, <laughs> uh, yeah. So for us, uh, for uh, and I'll show you a video, too. For us not to get up to somewhere, that means that current has to be going at least six to seven miles an hour. So that's how much flow they're pumping out. Um, I'd imagine like a big catfish, it can put you in a bad spot, like in a real guy. quick, real yeah. quick, yeah. With yeah. Current like especially that. around yeah, structure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. All you yeah. can do is kill the spot lock and get the fish straight up and down and fight it that way. And he can't use the current against you anymore. I mean, that's, that's really all you can do in that situation is you're at the fish's mercy though. Yep. Yep. Wow. Would you be able to pull my screen up real quick? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'll go over my rig. So there's my rod rack. So we got these rod racks that are built now. Shout out Ryan for building mine. Uh, I'm rocking the stealth rod holders because I like the versatility of moving them. A lot of guys run the metal rod holders like monster rod holders and SmackDown. I got, if you can see, I got my seat raised quite a bit. My, my, my knees are at like a 90 degree angle. It is so comfortable. Then I have, this is a game changer. This cushion, these thicker cushions are an absolute game changer. Uh, I run the 24 volt. I got my Lowrance hooked up to my 24 volt. Um, and that, and then, you know, in this particular trip, we are running planar boards. So here are my four planar boards and let me go. So like right here, you'll see I'm st- this is me standing in the back of my kayak facing the back of my kayak out back reel in the fish in. Um, but let me show you what I mean about the current. Let me pull up the, when I caught my PB blue right here. So this current right here is going about six miles an hour. If you're aware of this current, this is the shoots at the falls. So when you go to the oh, falls yeah, yeah. in Louisville, Ohio, behind Louisville, the hydros Kentucky. to the left, <laughs> uh, on the Kentucky side, behind the hydros on the Kentucky side, it goes towards the towards the barge. Kayaks can't fish this unless they got a 24 volt motor. And you'll see there's a boat coming up. Me, he even gets stuck around right here. So I end up. Go- I'm actually on the phone with Ryan in that, which is kind of funny, but. If you go a little farther, that's the current I'm fishing in. I'm trying to target this four and a half five mile an hour current right here. And then when this guy hit, um, like, and this goes to the stability of the kayaks and stuff that we're in. I'm standing up sideways. You see, like, no one stands up sideways in their kayaks like this. This is almost unheard of in most kayaks. And what kayak are you in there? That one particular is a take two. Uh, the one I'm currently rocking is the unlimited, but as far as the stability is concerned, they're essentially equal when stability is concerned. So this is like a 55 pound fish trying to pull me out of the boat. Um, I actually had to take my hand off the rod at some point in here, right around here, because I don't know if you guys can see it. There's a little outlet that comes right here with these rocks. He was pulling me, the, the, the bank here comes straight down. He was pulling me, I, my back end would have smacked off those rocks. And I probably would have flipped if I didn't take my hand off the take my hand off the rod and then readjust my kayak. And then landing um, landing this guy. Let's see here. Yeah. So using a net. So in, I don't know about your world. In our world, there's this like weird faux energy about being a tough guy and not using a net and landing everything with your hand. Mm-hmm. But like, yeah. So that that's even down that big. Yeah, y'all both. Yeah, flip. yeah. Not both no, flip. No, flip them. you reach and get them. You're not a man in our world if you don't reach your hand down and pull him in the kayak. And I'm just like, that doesn't make any sense to me, uh, especially as a tournament angler, because I can't tell you how many of these because we're in kayaks. We don't have hard. We don't have strong hook sets. So this fish can literally pull me without the hook even burying at all. So a lot of times you get these fish, you land them in the net and the hook just pops out because pressure landed that fish. It wasn't even it wasn't even hooked the entire time. And what so, some people don't realize with these big catfish, unless you've getting these really big ones like they're in this picture. And how, how big is this one that, that we're looking at? Just for the in case they're listening to this. 55 to 60 pounds, right oh, yeah. around 55 big, to 60 pounds. Big ass fish. Their mouths, the two section gets. I mean, how wide do you think the teeth are just alone on that? And that becomes such a really hard area to get the hook into, especially mm-hmm. on a kayak. It's, it's an inch and a half, two inches wide, the tooth patch is, yep. maybe more. Yep. We're mainly running 10 out and 12 outs on our on our hooks. Like a, if, I'm, if I'm fishing for blues and plat, flats, the smallest hook I'll run is a 10. Uh, even when I'm channel cat fishing, the absolute smallest I'll go is a five. Yeah, I won't go lower than a five out, even when chasing channel cats. I'll be honest with you guys. When I run into them on the Ohio River, I'm usually cussing. <laughs> oh, run into what? The, the catfish? Yeah. Oh, that's totally you fair. Because you'll th- you, I, I will think I have a giant striper yeah. on, man. I'll be fishing some brush pile. I'll be fishing big swim baits, man. Not even stuff you think, you know. It, and like you were saying, they're predators, man. I, you know, I fish all different size swim baits. But, man, they'll come out of stuff and chase them down and hit the stuff, man. I mean, it's... It's a pretty I caught one on Nico last weekend. Fight. Yeah. I was I was cussing it because I caught one on Nico. I'm like, you know, 
I thought I had a big and yeah. Actually, let me pull this back up. Ironically, you said that I was kind of cussing the video I just put out today. I never caught um, this fish in this style of fishing. So I'm at, up at Watts Bar. So I'm up in, in the Hydra. So it's probably on a four mile an hour current or so. Yeah, I caught this guy. I caught this guy bumping. Couldn't believe it. That is a big drum. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm all excited. I thought I got a big old flathead because drum don't get enough credit for how hard they fight. Yeah, so my rod buries over. So I think it's either a big flathead or a striper running with my bait. And I get him up to the surface. My heart flutters because I see brown thinking it's a flathead. And then it's like, nah, just a drum. I was so bummed. So <laughs> bummed. Can, can you kind of talk about the different species of, uh, cause uh, it's something I'm pretty ignorant of uh, the different species of catfish and, and when you're going to target what, which ones are the biggest and, and all that. Absolutely. Um, so channel cats are the smallest of the three uh, catfish species. So we'll just stick to the ones that we tournament fish for. So channel cats are the smallest, but they're, they're the meanest in my opinion. Um, they're probably the best fighting fish in the country. Now, every fish kind of has their, what they're known for stripers, amazing hit and run kind of die off, you know, after the first couple seconds, minutes, whatever, uh, blue cats, same thing. Sometimes you can hit real hard and you reel them up and they're just big, fat and lazy. And then they won't fight the whole time. Flatheads sometimes don't even care. They're hooked until they get to the boat. And then when they realize they're hooked, now you have a, a game, like, you know, you know, it's game on. Um, but channel cats front fin or you hook them till you picture them and get them off the boat. They're just mean SOBs. Like <laughs> I can't tell you how many times I have caught a 20 pound channel cat on, you know, Cowan Lake or Sandusky Bay. That feels like a 45, 50 pound blue in the Ohio river. Cause they just, they're, they just, and it's nonstop. It's beginning to end. They just never quit. Um, so channel cats are the smaller ones. Uh, blue cats, they're the biggest one. The biggest of the three are a blue cat. So I think the world record is 143 pounds. It's right around there. Don't quote me. That's the biggest one recorded. Um, typically at these tournaments, if there's blue cats in the water, those are the ones you're chasing because they're blue cats and channel cats are always on the move. They're never stationary. Flathead, they are a stationary. They're more of a stationary fish. They will leave their den, their area to hunt. Uh, but when you're chasing flatheads, it's more akin to hunting than it is fishing. So if you can put your like brain in and all that. Yeah. But if you could put your brain into like deer hunting mode, then that's how you trophy flathead catfish. You need to find where they're at. You need to know when they're going to be where they're at. You need to drop, you know, good live bait. Uh, you know how you drop feed and stuff for, for deer to, you know, get them in. You got to drop good live bait or good cut bait. Uh, flathead rarely hit, you know, you know, stinky, rotted, etc. And that's another thing that we struggle with, keeping our bait fresh. So you can go to the store, buy a lure. If you don't, until you lose that lure, you got that lure. We have a limited, on top of the, the trophies being so hard to catch, we have a limited amount of time to use that bait fish that we caught to get it in front of one of those giant fish. So, you know, we go catch that white bass. We're using um, a 12 inch piece of white bass. And now we, on top of that, we got to get that in front of that big fish in time before that 12 inch piece of white bass expires. So, I mean, you can, there are ways you could freeze them, but there's nothing, there's nothing better than fresh bait. Fresh bait typically always outperforms frozen bait. I almost came home from the tournament this weekend because I didn't have bait caught the day before the tournament. That's how important wow. fresh bait is to me. I almost, well, I was having kayak issues. I had a hole in my kayak, motor issues, and didn't have fresh bait. And I'm like, I'm leaving, Mike. I'm going home. And he's, no, you can use my kayak, blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, I don't have bait. Uh, I'm I'm done with this. Like, I was literally ready to come home and eat he had to talk me into staying and a buddy of mine talked me into going out on the boat with him that night. And I went out with him and just so happened. I got up the next morning and started working on my trolling motor and trying to sort out all my problems. And one of the bait dealers called me and they just happened to have got eight fresh skipjack that morning. And I was like, all right, that's a sign. <laughs> and then went on the next day to win the tournament. So I'm glad I didn't give up and come home, but I definitely, definitely had my head down for a little bit there. How much are skipjack? Um, I think I paid six bucks a piece for those. That's cheap. Wow. But really? 
that was also if you go here and buy them somewhere in Ohio at a bait shop, you're eight and ten bucks a piece yep. for them, and those yeah. are frozen. I will not even use those. Yeah. After they're frozen, I will not even use them. I'll yeah, freeze they, them and give them to Mike, but <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, they're not they're not the best. And you got to think about it too. You're getting three cuts of bait out of that. Up here, you'll get yeah. five maybe because you know I'm sure it's the same in every other species. You're typically trying to match a hatch. So up on the Ohio River, I know for a fact I'm targeting five to fifteen pounders because that's the main uh, size in there. And if I'm tournament fishing, I'm trying to get you know my board filled up first before I'm necessarily targeting monsters. Monsters will still hit you know a two by four inch bait, but like when, when I'm down in Alabama and Tennessee. You'll never see a bait smaller than five inches by three inches wide on my hook, ever. If you see me with a five by three up here on the Ohio River, either I'm having an amazing day and I'm trying to target a monster, or I'm having an absolutely crap day and I'm trying to win big fish. <laughs> yeah. So, you'll, you'll, I mean, I'll take a 12, 14 inch skipjack, cut the tail off of it, fillet the side off, and use the whole skipjack for a piece of bait sometimes down there in Tennessee. Mm -hmm. Wow. So, like, what, what's a. What what's a tournament strategy? Or are, are you like catch a limit first, go for the kicker first? So so it does depends. It, does it always change? Yeah. Me as a tournament angler, a lot of times I go out there and try to get three small ones right off the rip, and I do that because usually I've got several areas where I can go catch my three small fish. So I, I'll pre-fish and I'll find my area with my big fish because they're usually take longer to hit. You know, you have to work for them a little more. I can usually go and get three small ones relatively quick. My strategy with that is usually to jump on the board first and kind of get in everybody's head because it's all done through an app and I Hell submit yeah. my fish as I catch them. So if I get my three on the board, everybody's like, oh, Ryan's already on them. We ain't got a chance now. You know, I try to get that mentality started. And, and that actually starts with, with me the night before the tournament at check-in when we're getting our identifier. Oh, yeah, I'm on them. I know where I'm going. I got three forties basically tied to a log. You know, I know exactly where my fish are and, and you start getting in people's head right then. And I mean, it, it really does work. You'll see, you'll see some guys when you're conversating with them and you're telling them that their mood will just completely change. Oh, well, I've only caught one fish pre-fishing and I'm like, I've already beat you, you know, pack it up. And, but now like this, <laughs> this trip in Tennessee, I knew the big fish were in the area I was going to. I knew I was on them. I went there straight, started dropping big baits for big fish right off the get go. But I had already been, I'd already pre-fished that area a couple of times throughout the week. I knew they were there. I knew what I was going to get. And I was actually not extremely happy with my score. When I was telling you that rain came in, I called Mike. I was like, Hey Mike, get your fat hind end out of the bed and get down here, dude. They are on fire. And he's like, oh, I'll be there when it stops raining. I said, well, I'm under the picnic shelter now. I'm laying here about to take a nap, wait on the storm pass. But they are on fire. Get down here. He shows up, and five minutes in, I think it was, he pulls a 50 out from under my kayak. Let me see here. On tournament day, I pulled this up literally right under his kayak. Yeah, I'm this actually guy... sitting in front of him taking pictures right there. Yeah. How are you going to put that thing on a board? It's not as hard as it sounds. The big ones are easy. Believe it or not, I'd rather I'd rather measure this fish over a 30-inch fish all day long. Because the big ones, they kind of succumb. When you put them on the board, they're kind of like, all right, game over. But the pull little up, ones uh, pull up just my just entries, Mike. Okay, yeah, I'll pull those up. I think I have them up right here, actually. Uh, from which one? From this past uh, one, Nickajack? Yeah, Nickajack's fine. Either you one. You guys are covered in fish slime at the end of a tournament, aren't you? <laughs> If I go oh, home yeah. and my hands ain't bleeding and I don't have slime all over me, my wife knows I didn't have a good day. So that's, <laughs> that was uh, my big fish of the day, actually, right there for our last tournament. Yep. So in our world, bump the nose, left side up, right side down, whatever your furthest is touching. We do quarter-inch increments just like you. And then whatever your identifier is, I hand out identifiers the night before. Um, that way no one has access to the identifier ahead of time. The identifiers, uh, this year, it's always one of our sponsors. So I'm one of the sponsors. So for this tournament, everyone had my ugly mug as their identifier. And then the way 
I know for a fact no one, you know, tried printing out a picture ahead of time and taking pictures with it is I write something special on each identifier the night before. This one just so happened to be the word Nick. We were on Nick and Jack, so I wrote the word Nick on every single one. Nobody knew what the identifier was going to be prior to 6 p.m. the night before because that's when I hand out all the identifiers at our check-in. Um, it's really efficient doing it this this way because the anglers, they don't have to worry. I, I get And I give them plenty of extras for when they inevitably lose them. Uh, this way, the anglers don't have to worry about writing something down the day of. All they have to do is remember the identifier, and they're good to go. Get your identifier in the photo. I do board checks at every single one. So you see that this is actually an OCT sticker. So I have OCT stickers placed across the board. That tells me this is a board that I have certified. And on top of that, I mark them off with little black X's just in case Mother Nature, you know, they're stickers. If Mother Nature comes and plays a factor and knocks them off, these little black X's are my backup to that. Um, so this way I know for a fact I certified the board. And this is also another reason we're using the musky bumper. You see how this is like 10 inches wide? If you yeah. try doing this on like a four inch wide, like it's almost impossible to measure a fish like this on a four inch wide board. Um, this I actually a, a catch folding 48 forever until I hated you. Quit. I hated you for that. I hated them for that. <laughs> they were impossible to judge. Also, the beauty about this, I can see on both sides of this fish essentially the nut eat. Like, you see how this 23 cuts off at his arm? Well, I could jump up to here and I know, yeah, because I, I know in your world, people have been busted breaking boards and sliding them in. Yep. You can't, you can't do that in our world. It's just not possible to do it in our world. Unless unless you catch like an 80 to 90 pound fish, nothing's going to be able to successfully cover up this entire board to where I can't see all the numbers clearly. I actually think it's insane that any species of tournament has anything thinner than the size of their fish. Like every board in an online tournament for fish should be wider than the target species. It's insane that they're not. <laughs> But you, but you, you can know, that's that. the first time. That's the first time someone's put it like that. It's insane. Like you're just opening the door for cheating. Why would you even open the door in the beginning yeah. days? Of course, I get you know everyone yeah. brand new. But why hasn't it evolved? Why yeah, hasn't it evolved yet? It doesn't make sense with the catch board. So like, I, I don't even know what you'd have. Like the amount of effort to be able to do it, man. It, it would have be... to be plastic. Oh, you they have a plastic. they have a big fish board. They got a sixty incher. Yeah. yeah, but it's not but very I, wide. Uh, no, they, no, they, I had the, they I had made the a new inch one. board that was only like three inches wide or something. Yeah, it was yeah. a balancing act to try to balance a fish on it. <laughs> Hold on, unless they pulled it, they came out with one directly to compete with the musky boards. It didn't and... fold though, did it? Or something was something was off about it that I didn't like. Let me see here. Big game Use board. Her. Use code KBB for five percent off your purchase. So I and I, like I love this company. I, like I just I wish they contacted me to test this out. So th here's the issues: one, it's just slightly too thin for for catfish, just slightly. It would still work, but dark blue and white, you can't do for catfish. It just you can't do it because you can't see the dang numbers at night, and sometimes you can't see them during the day. And their only two options, unless they've changed, are blue and black. Yeah, it's still blue and black. So they're the colors, the color scheme alone makes it. I just you can't you just we just can't accept them. <laughs> but they have one like this right here. Like if if I was a, a bass administrator, I would be begging catch, can you please make this in a 32 inch version? Keep it this wide. No bass, you can't cheat yeah. in a bass tournament with this board. It's just it's not possible. So I, I don't how this, wide is how wide is this board? I want to say that one's six inches. No, no, I thought it was like eight or ten. Eight. It's eight. And it, yeah, it's eight. Eight it's by eight five. That's so five tall, eight wide. Yeah, that's that's pretty wide. And the bump, it has a nice big bump. Like they they nailed it, minus the color scheme. If if they just asked me to test this, I could have told them make it white with black lettering, and I'll prove it for for my scene. Because, like I said, I, I don't have anything against catch. It's just it's a completely useless board for for our for our scene. I, if I can't see the numbers, why 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 would I approve the board? <laughs> we'll send this episode to Duke. Maybe he can hook. He can <laughs> touch with you. I mean, he's he's always down for new ideas. I'm I'm sure yeah. he'd be down to try and make one. Yeah, if he, if he would just make a white one with black lettering, I would approve it immediately and say catch sixty four and musky bumper illegal. 
There you go. And cut a hole Done in it for deal, the fin. Man. Cut a yeah. cut a slot for the fin to fit oh, through. Now you're getting picky. Let's get the color scheme right first. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, <laughs> so no, I so mean, what you else? could see you could see that fish on the board. I mean, it was it, it's not that bad. And I leave like I leave my hook in the fish's jaw. Most of the time when I'm in a tournament, that way, if it does flop off my board, my rods and the rod holder, wow. I've got a good chance of getting that fish back. If it does flop off the board and hit back in the water. Um, a lot of guys will use grippers on a lanyard. I've seen that fail way too many times. It's not, and it blocks the bump. So you get a lot of people complain, oh, that fish doesn't look like it's bumped very good. And then Mike has to go by and microscope every inch of the bump to see if you have it bumped or not. It, yeah. it just causes a headache to have the grippers in the fish when they're on the board. So I've tried to stay away from that. With with such big fish, are the the links usually like bunched up, or is it you know, spread out in tournaments? Is it? You mean as far it, as like how like you know, is. most of our tournaments, it's going to take three forty inch fish to win. But, I mean, oh, is it usually real close? Let yeah, me, is it um, usually real close? Go ahead and pull up my screen real quick. I just show an example for sort of like for this national trail. Uh, let's see if I can zoom in for you guys. For this national trail, like you got 40, 38, 38, 41. But as you go down, they start to spread out. Yeah. Um, and also, we rarely run into the situation. Whoops. We rarely run into the situation where people are worried about the same fish being submitted twice. Uh, one, because catfish digital camo is extremely easy to to pick a, pick up pick apart. They might look like a like a blank colored fish but they're extremely easy to tell which one you know which one's which and on top of that um the dish the the lengths are just you're not going to make so like andrew green here had a 35 and a 26 you're not going to make that 35 look like a 20 you know it's so hard yeah. to to it to um to make you know similar fish look like that uh month longs let me go to the month longs real quick month longs can be a little different um, so like the slot, I have my work cut out for me in a slot. I haven't judged them yet. 276 fish. I got, I have to go judge and the slot limit is 30 inches. So I have to go make sure this guy has 10 fish between 29 and 30 inches. I have to make sure none of these 10 fish are identical, the same fish. And I have mm. to make sure they're all measured correctly. So the slot is the slots where I make my money. If I'm just being honest, the slots, the, the one that takes a lot of time to judge. But if you go to the month long. Uh, and back to my tournament sponsors. If you sponsor my scene, you get slapped on everything. I no longer do you sponsor this one event. So like Catfish Sumo, they sponsor OCT. So I have them on a month long. We have them on the national trail. We have them on other stuff as well. Uh, what is what, what is Catfish Sumo? Catfish Sumo, they are our uh, rod and tackle company sponsor. They, they are, are one-stop shop for everything you need to catch catfish. Yeah. Gotcha. So the big fish tournament where it's your 10 biggest or your five biggest fish, this is going to be a lot easier for me to judge because like stand three, he has a 46, a 41, 39, 38, Garen, 39, 39, 38, 36. So the, the month longs get a little tighter. Um, but the only one that really is a struggle for me, and it's just time wise, is the, the slot tournament. His name's Stan three. Uh, that's his YouTube channel. I believe Stan three. Oh yeah. He, so his dad has a YouTube channel. Uh, uh, two stands fishing, stand one and stand two. <laughs> All right. Yeah. And Cap, they're, this is. They're both Stan Smith, though. OCT10 at catfishsumo.com for any gear. And they, uh, something I really appreciate, and I'm, sh I'm sure your world's probably worse for this. This ain't junk. It's not like cheap plastic. It's not, um, how do I put them over without putting everyone else down? Uh, it's just, of course, everything's coming from China. We all understand that, but it's the higher quality gear. So like when you come and you look at their, you know, their dragon weights, there's science that goes into these, these using good quality equipment, uh, in our world, you want your dragon weight a lot of times to be as short as possible, but as heavy as possible. He has some of the shortest leaders with the most length. Like there's nothing, he doesn't cut any quarters with any of his stuff. I've had people in the bass world ask me to get spooks for them because a lot of our spooks, they, they tell me, they're like, yo, your spooks look awesome. Like our spooks don't look nothing like this. And we're 
It's an actual lure for us, and you're buying them for a dollar a piece just to use as something to float up our bait. <laughs> we're not even using it as a looter. We're, we're literally – so these spooks, we just use them to hold our bait off the water. We're not using them as an actual lure, and we're getting really? them a dollar – yeah, like a dollar two a piece. Like a they're just spooks. Fly. Yeah, they're just a spook. If you like, I, I've seen spooks sell sell individually for like ten to fifteen bucks. You just throw a yeah. pack of hooks on these. That's all. They're just, it's your normal spook. <laughs> so, are you guys both local to like Cincinnati, or are you farther up in the state? Or no, I'm I'm down in Birmingham, Alabama. Oh, okay. I thought you were in a Cincinnati. Okay, I'm in Cincinnati. Yeah, oh, okay. in Cincinnati. All right. So you'll be able to probably hit us up when we come down to Alabama here. And what is it, September? Uh, September, you go back down to Wheeler. Wheeler. Wheeler, yeah. I got a bone to pick with your state. Why do you guys change your month for your annual license in September? Dude, I don't know. It gets <laughs> so many people. It's so stupid. I had no, so I, I had no I, idea. We I were at the early. end of a state fiscal year, though. That makes sense. Possibly, but yeah. we were we were down there earlier this year for our event on Pickwick Wilson. I got my annual because I'm like, okay, we have another event later on this year. Guess when the event is? September. So I gotta mm. buy my second annual license because we're coming we're coming back next year. But I mean, now I know. I guess I was just like, you gotta be kidding me! I spent sixty or seventy bucks for two days of fishing. <laughs> it's it's ignorant for sure. Because I'm from Mississippi and they do it, you know, the regular ad, annual. But here it's yeah the September. Did you deal. you didn't even fish two days while we were down there, Mike? I think you only fished one day. <laughs> I am uh I am notorious for being extremely lazy. Ex yeah yeah it's like so our last tournament um I used the excuse I had to make sure I'm the tournament director so I have to make sure my phone's not broken so I could judge the fish. I was definitely in bed till 10 a.m. because I just didn't feel like fishing in the rain. Yeah, yeah. Right. So, yeah. Oh, well, we had a tournament last weekend, and as soon as it was launch, it, uh, I don't know. I get, I got there with everybody else at five forty-five, and it started storming. I didn't wake up till seven. I was sleeping in my truck, and everybody, I, I wake up and go outside, and everybody else is gone. <laughs> it had been <laughs> quit raining for thirty minutes. That's awesome. <laughs> it was a great nap though. And then, last thing I'll say on the OCT Education Online Catfishing Tournaments YouTube page, the there's a playlist called 2024 Important Videos. If you click on that, if you're brand new to honestly, if you're brand new to um, online tournament fishing in general, you watch these three or these five videos. It walks you through how to get started, start to finish, how to enter our tournaments, how to find it on the app, how to submit them in tournaments, how to um, what else how to properly take photos of fish, etc. It's a, every year I put a new playlist out cause the app always changes. So if you, if you're interested in getting involved in any of the tournaments, why I always, a, I ask everyone, watch these five videos first, then hit me up on Facebook with questions. Um, anytime day or night, I have my notifications off on purpose because our tournament anglers were catfish guys. So a lot of them are fishing at midnight, one, two in the morning. And I want people to ask me when the question's fresh, because if you say, oh, I need to ask Mike a question at 2 in the morning and you wait till 9 a.m. when you wake up, it's never going to be the same question that you originally had. So anytime, day or night, hit me up on Facebook, uh, Facebook Messenger. Don't worry about waking me up. It won't because, well, even if I have my notifications on, it ain't going to wake me up. So, <laughs> yeah. So online catfishing tournaments on YouTube um, and then go to the playlist in 2024 important videos to get started and then hit me up with questions afterwards. That's the easiest way to do it. Cool. I, dude, I'd want to freaking catch some catfish now. <laughs> I mean, it sounds like a hoot. I'll Kurt. be in Alabama for a week, so hit me up. You're more than welcome to link up with me during pre-fishing or whatever and come out, and I'll show you what I do and try to help you catch one. <laughs> yeah, man, Kurt. sounds like fun. Kurt, as, as paying for this, I was gonna I was going to ask you in, in writing uh, on Messenger, but I wanted to put you on the spot. In payment for having us on, you have to take me wiper fishing once. Now, it doesn't have to be. I don't care about the location. Wait, I what's just this me stuff. There's a we. Okay, all right, us, us, us. Yeah. Okay. You have to take us wiper fishing once, and I just, I just want to learn. Uh, I, I don't care if we even catch a fish. I just, I just really like. I, I will pay for a guide. I am not above paying for a guide service. No, but, man, I'll take you for free, man. There's no. 
There's no secrets about it. It's really pretty easy. I mean, what everyone acts like, it's like you just go out and catch them. That's not how no. it goes, man. Mm -mm. What happens is, is you run you run into a landslide of them every once in a while. And then, then and that makes it look like you're just killing them all the time. That's really not the case. You go out and you'll catch a few sometimes, and then other times you'll catch a, a bunch of them. And then sometimes you won't hardly catch but one or two, you know. Mm -hmm. But yeah, Malpa, I'd be more than happy to. You've seen some of the catfish I've caught over the years. You know, I just run into them with artificial baits, but it's it's pretty close to some of the same areas that you're catfishing, I would imagine. Yeah, I yeah. actually caught two big wipers last year. On uh, careful, when we were catfishing. Careful, <laughs> careful where this is going. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, so actually, I want I want to bring this up because we do use ev we use every other fish as bait. Um, it's 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 known. I, I have a personal rule, and Ryan follows this rule. It, we'll explain why we didn't. 80% of the time, I follow it. 95% of the time. If I catch a trophy <laughs> species, a trophy fish of any other species, I, I will not use it as bait, and I will not keep it as food. Uh, my personal opinion is I don't want someone killing a trophy blue, trophy channel, trophy flathead for any reason. Uh, we unfortunately don't have to just deal with angler pressure. We have trophy pay lakes absolutely decimating our river system. So, like, we're losing hundreds of thousands and millions of pounds of fish every single year. So what I try and do as respect for them, what, yes, what, I, what, I, I didn't understand whenever you were saying that. Are they, they taking them out of your public waters and put them in? Man, oh, oh, man. They're, they're, setting like, up, they're setting up these big, long nets in oh. the Kentucky waters, which most of the Ohio in our area is Kentucky waters, and they're just catching them. They're catching everything, really. They're, I mean, it's 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 also hurting the the big hybrids too, because the high big hybrids are getting caught in it, and the big hybrids are dying. They're not supposed to kill them, but they are. They're just getting caught in the net and dying. And then they take them and they sell them to pay lakes. Yeah, where it's look, have me back on for a podcast on that because it's a hour long conversation. There's just but but very very long story short, they take the fish, sell it to a pay lake. They go to a pay lake, they get caught for a month and die and get discarded, and then you just get replaced. Our fish take 10 to 20 years to get to trophy status. So when you take a 10-year fish out of the river system, that, does, that doesn't that does just come back the next year. So mm -hmm. like our, our fish population up here is really, really, really hurting. So like if I catch a trophy of any species, whether I want to use it as bait or not or eat it, I, I release it because that's not my species. If I catch a 14, 15-inch crappie, it's going back because that's some that's someone else's prize. That's somebody else's picture on the wall. 20 inch bass going back to uh, 15, 16 inch wiper. I don't that's probably not true trophy status because I, I don't know what your trophies are considered going back because I'm not like I to me. That's going to tickle someone much differently than me because I'm just throwing a spoon out there trying to catch anything that's going to hit people who are hunting those other fish out of respect for them. I try not to keep any trophies. The exception is if we are in trophy, trophy waters and there's more trophies of everything. So what he's about to tell you is he caught a 24 and 25 inch ish wiper on cut bait down at the falls and we were hurting for bait. So we did keep those and we, though we turned those trophy wipers into like seven or eight, 45 to 60 pound flatheads that night. So that's the very, very small exception to the rule. Um, but also I'll be honest. We had one each. If we caught seven more wipers at 24, 25 inches, they all seven would have went back because we had our fill. Um, it, conservation to us is extremely important and just res just respect. I, I just like when people even when people throw gar up on the side of the river, it's like that's a native species, yeah. man. Like what 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 was his crime other than being alive? Like that's not is it annoying to catch him? Yes, I agree. But like it's a living thing. Like what 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 did it do to you? Like what was its crime? It, it didn't do anything to you. That's why I never got into bow fishing because people bow fish, yeah. but they don't eat their catch ever. You yeah, know, like you me. never see bow fishermen eating the carp they shoot. So why I, would you I, go never, kill stuff that you're yeah. not going to eat? That's just the way I grew up. I've never understood bow fishing. I like. I'm sure it's fun. Uh, you know, I'm sure somebody's going to watch us get upset. Blah blah blah. But well, I mean, if, I if you, you know. like the the asian carp they're invasive they're trying yeah. to eradicate those a different story I get yeah. doing that yeah, but I, it's just not for me yeah i'm i'm not a big fan of anything that's like that like we're all putting hooks in their face i get it but like 
snagging for me. I can't get behind snagging because it's just, it's just, to me that's more torture. Um, like I believe in fair chase. You know, putting a bait out there, you're giving the fish a choice. You know, that's fair chase. Like when you're deer hunting on public land, that that's fair chase. It's you versus the animal versus the environment. When you're just ripping a hook and a 12 pound weight across the water as hard as you can, just hoping to hook into something, you know, I, I don't know. That's, just, I don't know. It just hurts. And that's a thing down in Kentucky. I don't know if you knew this, but that's a thing down in Kentucky. You're allowed yeah. to nagging for certain types of fish. Yeah. Yeah. Paddlefish mm-hmm. is a big one. Yeah. Yeah. But man, uh, that hurts me even more because they got so, their, their whole body soft. That has to kill. Yeah. That has to hurt so much. Different strokes. Well, damn, we ended yeah. on a sad note here. Oh, <laughs> um, that never happens with me. Way to bring Congrats. us down, Kag Mike. Sorry, <laughs> sorry, my bad. But seriously, no, if you want to, if you want to have a serious conversation about our commercial problem, have us have me back on. I I could probably even get a uh, conservationist like from the DNR or something on too. We should definitely do a conservation show. That would be a good one, actually. Yeah, we'll we'll, we'll one. definitely get one in here. We'll holler at you. Uh, well, I mean, it's been over an hour. We we want to be respectful of your time. Appreciate y'all being on. So, Mike, tell us where people can go one more time to sign up for tournaments, find out more, and uh, and any of your sponsors that you want to shout out as well. Sure. So it's online catfishing tournaments on. Uh, go to Facebook. That's where a lot of our stuff is. It's a public group. Online catfishing tournaments on the Fishing Chaos app. Uh, you're definitely going to want to hit me up on Facebook Messenger. That's where I do the majority of my messaging. You can find my number and stuff on the app as well through through the OCT uh, membership area. It has my phone number in here somewhere. Uh, one thing I didn't mention, you do have to be a an OCT member on the app. Uh, if you wouldn't mind bringing up my screen one more time. Yeah. So when you get – when the way you find it, download download the app, go to Trail Club, Start typing online catfishing tournaments. That's us right there with the King Cat logo and our our logo. Right here, it'll say join. You want to become a $20 member for the year. Uh, That just helps me pay with small stuff like insurance. Uh, Like our insurance this year was just under a grand for for the club. Um, So if you fish one of my events, whether it's online, a national event, in-person event, everyone's insured up to like million dollar limited liability, all that kind of fun stuff. So you go in here, you join, you become a member, then you go you know, if you want to learn how to do everything, go to the OCT YouTube page, watch the videos on the 2024 important videos to watch, come back, go to your tournaments, and then you, you know, find you find the series that you want to fish in. And you just it's really simple. Uh, you click on the tournament you want to fish, you click register, and when tournament day comes up, submit fish will be right here during tournament hours, and you'll watch the leaderboard grow. Um, the sponsors of our series, um, OCT, not just the national trail, but OCT in general, Catfish Sumo, OCT10 at CatfishSumo.com, Raccoon Creek Outfitters, 10% off of in-store purchases other than kayaks. If you mention OCT, uh, they're, they're all their, their whole staff is aware. Also, if you tell them you're with us, there's a very, very high chance you'll get some kind of hookup on a kayak. We just can't officially put that on paper. Um, like we have a fleet of custom made new canoe unlimiteds out there at every single tournament. It's actually really cool. We have like 10 black, pure black new canoe unlimiteds that roll into every tournament. Um, so Raccoon Creek Outfitters, they're in the middle of Ohio. Uh, and then King Cat. Uh, essentially, King Cat's covering all the expenses of everything. Uh, the only thing I forgot to mention is every series has a point race. So the King Cat, you know, we have these, you know, $1,600 guaranteed before a single entry at every tournament. There's a five thousand dollar point race, three thousand to first, fifteen hundred a second, I think, or twelve hundred a second, and like seven fifty to third. Um, you know, my my the month long trail trail race is a thousand dollars guaranteed. Uh, I'm real big on the guaranteed money. Um, so there's a very good chance if you do this and you're successful, uh, your your payouts are worth it. Our month longs are the only thing that are slightly cheap. I'm more interested in the month longs having more numbers per se because like i said i can look in this open tournament and tell you the top three before the tournament even starts so i i knock down our month-long entry fees every month 13 bucks because that doesn't what's that three beers at a at a bar so you're not investing it used to be 50 to 60 bucks a month uh but we don't want to just keep feeding the same people over and over again at the very top of the leaderboard that's why we put the thousand dollar point race for every single month long and we cut down the entry fee to 13 dollars so 
that's my spiel. Um, and Flegal Electric, shout out Flegal Electric. They're doing all of our awards this year, which I don't have Flegal. any on me. Yeah, Flegal Electric. I think I have some awards I can probably show. Uh, yeah, sure. Uh -oh. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you for having us on, by the way. Yeah, man. Oh, oh, there's more room in there too. Watch out. Yeah. Take yeah. one, take one out. Make put it in the put it in the light. Make it actually look good. Yeah, these rewards are legit. Oh uh, yeah, that looks awesome. awesome. Yep, first place, Nick and Jack. So Ryan, how about you, man? Who do you want to shout out? Uh, myself for one. Go check out my social medias. Oh yeah, I'm Kai Mike on YouTube. Yeah, Kai <laughs> Mike forgets the important stuff, like his own personal stuff. But I'm uh, a Ryan Borch, Ryan Bortz, blue collar fishing on any platform you want to go to. Uh, YouTube is my big one. TikTok, Facebook. If you need to get a hold of me, Facebook Messenger is probably the best way. It's probably going to take me a few days because I only check my message request if we're not friends. Like every three or four days, I'm trying to get better at that. Um, I'm gonna shout out uh, all the same sponsors for the trail: Catfish Sumo, King Cat, Flegal Electric, Raccoon Creek. Um, Muddy River Catfish and Rods is one of my big sponsors, Monster Rod Holders, and Never Lost Anchors, I think. Am I forgetting anybody, Mike? I have no idea. It was Big Cat Boards, but they're no longer in business right now, so. Right now. I think that's, that's it. Word. Yep. Um, but, yeah, that's about it. Just hit me up on YouTube for the most part. That's my big thing right now. Yeah. Cool. Well, we appreciate y'all being on, schooling us on catfish, because I definitely did not know much, but I it got me into it. I'm, I'm it's excited. a whole other world, man, right? Yeah. <laughs> I'll catch one next time, be happy about it, and not be upset. So. I'll, uh, I'll go ahead and tell you, if you go out chasing them, be ready to spend some money, because it's going to be very addictive. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We get, we get a rap that it's, like, cheap. It's so much more work. I used to be a bank. I used to uh wade rivers that's how i got that's how i fished my whole life it is so much cheaper to use lures so much so much cheaper you lose one cast net you lose three cast nets in a week that's 190 bucks if they're if you're using cheap cast nets like like yeah um, i miss geez. using just lures so my life was so much cheaper so much cheaper <laughs> i like it i appreciate, well, appreciate you guys you. on yeah man thank y'all Appreciate y'all being on, and uh, good luck the rest of the season, and and we'll see see y'all again next week. Thank y'all for Thanks, listening. Guys. Later.